Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat. Uh, if you are new here, I like to read dark, weird, and or translated books usually. Uh, although, if you're not new here, uh, this month is a bit different than other months because I was in my first trimester nausea, um, hellscape, which thank God it's over. Uh, and so this is for April and May. So for the two months I read nine books or I attempted to read nine books. And basically they are all either thriller or romance. So if that's not your bag, I totally get it. Uh, but those are basically the only types of books that I could read in my like nausea haze uh, because I needed either a plot that gripped me or something I didn't have to pay that much attention to um, like some of these romances. So. Without further ado, let's get into it. So the first one that I attempted to read and failed utterly is Yokohama Station by Yubi Usukari. Um, and this is a Japanese translation, um, a sci-fi from NetGalley that I was gonna read. However, the translation was really clunky and or the original story I just don't care about. So there's this station where basically the up and ups live and then all the kind of slummers live on the rim of it, like right between the station and the shoreline, uh, like the ocean. And one of our main characters gets a ticket to go inside the station. And that is as far as I got because it was painful reading. It was so slow, so sloggy, and I just couldn't continue. So I decided to DNF it and put myself out of my misery. Uh, yeah, because I was feeling so sick. If any of the books didn't gel with me, I was like, <laughs> no. Um, so after that, I was like, okay, I need something to pick up my spirits because that was a horrible time. So I read the first two books in a romance series. So I read Junkie, which is number one by Cambria Hebert, and Rev, which is the second one. So I'm going to talk about the first one, and I'm not going to spoil anything for the second one. So this is an M.M. romance where we are following Drew Forrester. So he is a self-proclaimed adrenaline junkie. He races cars and he's kind of on the indie circuit. And his best friend uh, is a fraternity, not king. What's the head of the fraternity called? Principal? <laughs> What's it called? Anyway, I'll, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. He's the head of the fraternity. Of his university and he happens to be the mechanic who works on all of Drew's cars. So they have had a very long-standing friendship when it slowly, so slowly, this is a super slow burn series, starts to morph and change into something else. So I gave these overall each four stars. They were really good. I read them back to back. So like I finished Junkie, I think at 11 p.m. And then I read Rev until 4 a.m. So that's how much I really liked this series. The next one was, I was like, okay, I did a romance, let's do a thriller. So I picked up The Golden Child by Wendy James. It says, can bad children happen to good mothers? So I was like, Awesome, Evil Child, I love this. It's an Australian author, so two birds, one bookish stone. Uh, and I actually got a significant way through, I think about over halfway, and I was like, yeah, the kid's just like a bratty asshole, not exactly like evil. And it was just kind of like a huge letdown because nothing significant was happening by halfway through and I was so, so bored because a lot of it transitioned to like the mom thinking like, oh, should I stay at home or should I go back to work? And it was about her like deciding that and I'm like, I could not give less of a fuck. So this was a DNF. Um, next, after that, I was like, Okay, it's fine. Okay, that thriller didn't work. I'm gonna pick up another thriller that's Australian that I've really been wanting to get to. And ladies and gentlemen, this was a fucking amazing ride. This is The Hunted by Gabrielle Bergmoser. So this is a last stand thriller in the Australian outback. We're following a grandfather who runs this like broken down gas station. And 
a little bit of a ways behind the gas station is his broken down house and that's all that's there. Um, and his granddaughter has been having some issues so her family has sent her to live with him for a few weeks to like get her to calm down and take her out of the situation. So it's, it's just the two of them. When suddenly a woman drives up staggers out of her car and collapses. She's been shot, she's been stabbed, and they have to decide what to do. Um, and then people come after that woman. This was like full octane, absolutely amazing. This is uh, like a thriller that if you can't stomach intense, intense gore, this would not be for you. So like I have the all the triggers and I'm just gonna list them because sometimes people don't um, like listen to me when I say like this book is really dark so if you can't stomach this like don't read it so this has gore murder cannibalism torture human hunting guns dismemberment hanging bear traps PTSD kidnapping drugging and attempted rape so that's a lot okay so but if you can read thrillers with that kind of content this was just blew me away. It blew me away. And like, I want to read the next one if there is one in this next series. I really hope so. Um, yeah, I just couldn't put it down. It was absolutely amazing. The author freaking went there. And I don't want to say too much more because I don't want to like spoil anything. But if you are looking for a gritty, gory, last stand thriller with a really strong female main character, this is it. This is it. And yeah, it's so good. And I feel like the other cover, which is one that I gave Alicia for the um, giveaway, I, I gave away a long time ago, it's white and it has like a meat hook, a bleeding meat hook on it. And I feel like both of these covers accurately portray the story that you're getting. So if you're intrigued, I highly urge you to get this book. So I was like, okay, I'm in the thriller freaking mood. Let's continue on. So I just pulled like all the thrillers off my shelves that I had. Next I read A Place of Execution, which is a Scottish thriller by Val McDermid. Um, and this one is very interesting because I was really torn about, about it. So we're following a small village where about 20, 30 years ago, a girl goes missing and they think that she either fell into like the peat bogs and drowned, they can't find her, or she was kidnapped and something really bad happened to her. Um, and that case goes unsolved until 20, 30 years into the present when something occurs that brings up that case again. Um, and I really liked the setting. It's very like bleak Scottish highlands um, and the small town vibes is both good and bad, right? Because you know what you're getting with a small town. Everyone knows everyone's business. They're keeping their secrets to themselves and they're not gonna tell the cops like dick all about anything if they don't want to. Um, and I did not see the reveal coming. However, this book is way, way too long. Uh, the author really loves, this is over 600 pages. The author loves to tell you every single thing about every single character and like the history of their family and what their house looks like and what the clothes they're wearing. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. So I don't think I'll ever read anything by Val McDermott again. However, if you really do like a thriller author that fills out every single thing around every single person, this might be one to check out. And overall, I gave this three stars. Uh, so then I was like, okay, well like, I think I'm doing pretty good with thrillers. I'm gonna give another thriller another chance. So this is a Swedish thriller. This is uh, also Larson's The Black Path. This is following a lead female investigator who is part of a, a crime investigation where they found a woman's body in like one of the arcs that people use to ice fish. Um, and it goes from there. However, I'm not really going to get into this book that much because it was a belief, uh, let me see, yeah, a two, two star for me. Um, I really did not gel with this. I did not like the writing style. I did not like the pacing. I hated all the characters and 
that's all I'm gonna say about it. So I'm I'm sad because it is a Swedish translation, but it just did absolutely nothing for me. Um, so then after that, I was pretty much like, okay, great. So I went from like an amazing thriller to like a okay thriller to like a thriller I hated. Let's switch back to romance. So I read um, Till Next We Meet by Karen Rainey. It's exactly what I wanted, right? I sat in the bath for five hours because I, that day I just remember was like, like hell on earth for me. Like lots of vomiting and just terrible, terrible time. So I sat in the bath and I read this in one sitting. Uh, this is a historical romance where a woman's husband has gone away to war. She didn't really get to spend that much of a married life with him because he left pretty soon after they married um, and she writes to him. And wouldn't you know it, uh, he was an asshole and didn't want to write her and he's like a philanderer. So instead, like, that man's superior officer was writing her letters at first to just like not leave her so like lonely but then over time he starts to develop like real feelings for her from afar and it's further complicated when the husband dies and the superior officer has to go and deliver the news to her and he sees like she is very unwell and she's like falling apart at the seams and the people that are supposed to be taking care of her are not um, and she's very like sickly so he decides to like swoop in and help make her feel better but he like loves her but he can't tell her obviously that he was writing the letters because she is sick with grief over the death of her husband who she fell in love with through the letters so it's very like not miscommunication but there's a really solid reason why he can't tell her which i really love because too often in romances it's like hinging on this like little tiny insignificant thing but this is like a major thing so i totally understand why he can't just tell her right away um so i gave it three stars it's just your average regency romance but with that nice little addition of falling in love through letters um, and then the last one I read was another romance. So this is Hard Sell by Hudson Lin. Uh, this one is an MM romance. The author is Asian as are both of the main characters. One of the main characters is basically a company buyer and when he goes to buy or invest in this latest company, he realizes that his best friend's little brother works at the company as like an analyst and it is like immediately flames between them like the tension the sexual chemistry is immediate i really liked that the chemistry was so strong because they've known each other for so long from the time that they were very young to like around the age that one was 19 and the other was in his 20s and they had a one night stand and that is why there's such like this strong sexual chemistry between them. But they're, it's like 10 years past that time. So they're both like trying to navigate how they feel. And also it's a sticky situation like with their families. Uh, so overall, I gave this three and a half stars. Basically, I thought that the sexual chemistry between them was really hot. But the rest of the plot like could largely just be forgettable. So unfortunately, I don't know if I would read more from this author. Um, I might actually, because it's really nice to see two Asian male leads in a romance, um, but I do have higher hopes for the next one. So that concludes my like hellscape reading. Uh, let me know what you think down below. Uh, definitely from all of these, the one that I absolutely recommend is the hunted this like blew me away um definitely pick it up if you like gory thrillers um and with that being said i'm going to say goodbye for now i'm glad that i'm almost caught up on my reading wrap-ups i think the next one is just yeah june which we're currently in so um almost done and i will see you in another video soon lots of love bye